I love John Wayne. I grew up on John Wayne, big fan, love all his movies, and I wanted to do a caricature of him. Now, one of the things that I find so interesting and so fun about doing caricatures is that it really teaches you to focus, to look at what you're actually painting. It's real easy as a portrait painter, as a figure painter, to slip into doing just a symbol so instead or something generic so instead of actually painting that person you're painting a generic head and what we want to do is if we're going to get a real likeness is to work from the generic uh, model and see how our figure our subject is diverging from that generic model in terms of focusing on those unique characteristics that really make that person distinct from all other people so that's what the beauty of doing a character is is you're focusing on those characteristics that make that person unique and you're enhancing them now the materials that I'm using now the materials I'm using I'm working in mixed media I'm working on Strathmore toned paper I really like that warm uh, color of the to of this particular toned paper I like the gray too but I really like the warmth of the toned uh, tan paper I'm using colored pencils and I'm not particularly uh, more fond of one brand over another. I have Prismacolor, I have Karen Dosh, I think it's uh, Albrecht Durer. I've got like four or five different kinds and I really like them all. Uh, one of the reasons I will maybe choose one over another is just that they'll have a color that's unique to that brand and I really like it. But um, uh, I think for the most part they're all really pretty good. I uh, use, what do I have here? I've got the Statler Mars plastic eraser. And I will tell you, using colored pencils, I have not had a lot of luck erasing colored pencil with a kneaded eraser. I like kneaded erasers, but I just haven't had a lot of luck lifting colored pencil off of the paper with uh, a kneaded eraser. So I do recommend something like the Stadler Mars Plastic. And one of the reasons I like it also is that it's not overly abrasive and it's not just going to tear your paper to pieces. Now I'm also using a Jelly Roll pen, which um, is nice for doing highlights. Uh, and I've also got the Faber-Castell Perfection 7058 pencil eraser and what I love about it is that since it's it's a pencil it's encased in wood you can use a pencil sharpener to sharpen this eraser to a a decent point which allows you to get into tighter spaces and be very much more precise with your erasing than you could be with you know even a kneaded eraser and then lastly <clears throat> as far as the pens and pens and pencils are concerned I've got a Pentel I think it's a Kurataki brush pen I fill it with Higgins eternal ink really really like it really like it a whole lot you can cover a lot of ground with it just a, a super little tool and then the paints that I'm using are my caseins and I really like casein paint the nice thing about casein is that you can draw over it all right, now here is all of the photographic references that I use for this particular painting. And uh, the, the photograph on the left-hand side in the center, that's the one that originally sparked my, and piqued my interest and sparked the idea of doing a caricature of John Wayne. And okay, you can see me getting started here. I'm in uh, what I kind of call the scribble or noodling stage where 
I'm not committing myself to anything in particular. I'm just trying to roughly lay out where I think I want the different features to go. I don't get involved in details at all. And one of the reasons you will see in just a little bit is that once I get started, I realized that I wanted the John Wayne's head to be substantially larger. So, oh my goodness, I hope you're not hearing the rattling as much as I am. But um, anyway, I wanted the character's head to be much larger. Well, boy, wouldn't that have been just a, a very frustrating experience to have sat down and spent 20 or 30 minutes doing some really detailed drawing only to realize that I wanted to move the head or make the head larger. That's just so discouraging. So put your details in at the very end. Don't commit yourself to anything until you've got stuff really where you want it to be. And then you don't waste time and get yourself all frustrated because you've done a lovely drawing that you've now got to just erase and start over. And at one point you'll see I did the same thing with the arm. I had the arm in one position and didn't care for it. So I moved it somewhere else. And again, it was no big deal. It was just a few lines that had been very um, casually put in, not carelessly. There's a difference between being careless and being casual. Casual, you're, you're putting it in, but you're not committing yourself. Careless, you're just throwing lines around, and that's, that's really not what we're trying to do here or anywhere. You don't ever want to just carelessly throw lines down. Now, as I begin to work on the horse, I want to put as much character, as much time, and as much thought into the horse as I do to the character, the main character, John Wayne. How I describe or depict the horse will tell the story of what's going on with just as much strength as anything I do with the main character so that uh, it's obvious that both the horse and the rider have turned, they're looking over their shoulders, something has come upon them in the background. Something We don't know what that is. Well, if I had made the horse terrified, then either it would be depicting the horse as much more of a cowardly horse or as uh, one who actually recognizes, recognizes the danger even more than the main character does. And that would maybe, you know, well, that would definitely change our idea as to what may be coming upon the horse and rider. So how I describe the character is of the horse is going to set the tone for the entire painting as much as the main character himself. Now once I get the drawing established like I want it, not, not finished, just established well enough that I feel comfortable grabbing my brush pen, then I grab my brush pen and my white highlighter pencil and I just start going back and forth describing the characters. Um, I'm going to make sure that now I'm really careful to describe the direction of the light where shadows are cast using the brush pen. When you're using multiple sources for your reference material, don't get caught up in the direction that the light is coming from in your reference material because it's usually not going to be coming from a consistent direction. That's where it's real important when you're drawing, when you're painting, to think in terms of the four basic shapes, spheres, cubes, cylinders, and cones. If you're thinking in terms of the character's legs being cylinders, it's much easier to make up what direction the light is coming from and how the shadows are wrapping around the, the figure. It's easier to figure that out on a cylinder than it is on a leg because a leg is going to have all those uh, 
creases and if, if it's covered with cloth then you're going to have all those wrinkles which can be very distracting and so you want to block that out of your mind at first and think this is a cylinder that's all it is one simple cylinder how does the light wrap around it once you've got that done then you can go in and start thinking about okay well now it's got more complex form going on with the shadows and so forth so Again, keeping in mind that everything is either going to be a cylinder, a cube, a sphere, or a cone. You can get your lighting broken down very simply Then, with those shapes. Then come in and put in you, any of your details that you want to. I also recommend, really for any style, if you're inking, use a brush or a brush pen to establish your darks first give your give your drawing something that gives it weight and stability a brush pen one nice thing is that you can by just applying a little bit of pressure you can make a thicker line raising it up you can make a thin wispy line and so you can give your even your linear work a lot of character using just a straight pen uh, the the lines tend to be well they're all they're all the same they, they don't have any character to them and it's just boring so using something like a brush or a brush pen now you've got something that's got some character to it that you can uh, describe how a form is turning simply by applying a little bit of pressure all of a sudden the brush thickens up and this line is now going from thin to thick and then back down to thin again well you're describing uh, form right there whereas if you're just using a, a pen all you're doing is outlining and it doesn't have any character and also using a brush to really go on and establish your shadow patterns is really nice you don't have all those thousands of crosshatch marks, which are just, uh, they look very tentative, uh, overworked. It's rare that you're going to have a something that's just overwhelmingly crosshatching that's not going to look weak and tentative and just not have a lot of strength to it. One of the things that attracted me to this whole picture was the red shirt. Now, in my original paint, uh, photograph that I saw, it was really sort of a washed out pinkish type shirt. And I saw another shirt that uh, John Wayne was wearing in another movie. And it was a bright red. And I really liked that. So I changed the shirt to that bright red. And that's the first color, real color note that I put down was that bright red shirt because that I wanted to be the strongest color note in the entire painting. So I put it down and now everything else can be balanced against that. Okay, and then after the shirt, then what I started doing was just putting in uh, color notes, just, you know, taking a little bit of the pink and putting on the chin, on the nose, on the ears, just to give him a little bit of, uh, of a color signature, just a little bit of life, but not trying to, this is not supposed to be a painting, it's, it's more of a mixed media. So I don't want to go in and just start really uh, applying thick layers of paint. And then with the horse, uh, I didn't want a brown horse, not for a number of reasons, but not the least of which is that with, if the saddle is going to be a brownish color, then I didn't want to just have brown on brown on brown. So uh, I decided for sort of a lavender color. Nothing really strong. I wanted to keep it subdued, but just to have something where there would be a separation between the horse and his his uh, saddle and all of the tacking around him and but had i made them both brown keep in mind that brown is is a 
family of colors. So you got blue browns and red browns and green browns and yellow browns. So if you do something like a horse that's got a lot of gear on him, then if everything's going to be brown, then just make sure that each of those browns have their own color signature. And it's not just a set of generic or, or just a generic brown that everything is done in and then the only way you can have a differentiation between one object and the other is just the value and you can run out of values very quickly there's the human eye only perceives really about seven or eight values from black to white but we can see tens of millions of colors so if you make something a yellow brown and something else a blue brown they can be the same value, but the eye is still going to distinguish between the two because they have a different color signature. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're doing something that's going to have a number of colors, all of which are very similar, then uh, give them really strong distinctive color signatures that will help to distinguish between the two. Now as I go in, I could have stopped at a couple of different places with this painting. I didn't have to carry it as far as I did. Uh, a lot of times people do caricatures like this and then they take it to a certain point and then they'll take, say, white paint or white pencil and just kind of do an outline like you can see I'm doing on some of this. And that's perfectly legitimate and fine. And I had thought about it for a little while, but then I thought, you know, I'd really like to carry it even a little bit further. So that's where I began putting in the expanding out the white so that it covered the sky. With the background, it's sort of a balancing act. You know, I'm working on the cactuses. I'm working on the brush and brambles down at the bottom. Um, with those things, they are supporting elements, but they are super important. You don't want to overemphasize them and turn this something like this into a grandiose landscape painting but by the same token you don't want to just again carelessly go in and just throw something down so it's a it's a nice balancing act between putting in just enough to describe where your character's at and maybe add to the mood of the painting but then let it go don't try and make a portrait of a particular barrel cactus, a portrait of a particular bramble bush. So it's that balance between just carelessly throwing down a symbol and getting caught up in details and doing a portrait of a cactus. All right, well, I think that's about it. This was just a fun little project, just something to explore a little bit of a different technique and just have fun for the afternoon. So I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode of The Arthropologist, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more episodes like this, think about subscribing. I'm Bill Wilson.
and I'm the anthropologist.